what do the Australians think about being called the Tex guinea pig? <laughs> well, look, it's definitely something that I've noticed that we're, we're, we're one of those kind of Goldilocks markets, I suppose, you know, where we're big enough that you can try something and know whether it works or not. And small enough that if you're a global player, it doesn't ruin everything and you may be just off Broadway enough. So you, you, you do see these experiments, you know, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as you've alluded to, we sometimes see the social media players try, try things differently. Um, you know, I write as well as writing about the media world, I write about the advertising and marketing world. And you certainly see some of the big consultancies, um, try new models here, you know, where they dip their toe into the advertising world to see if it's a world for them. Um, and then you see them roll it out on the global stage what the media landscape is like in Australia and how it's different from the US or England or other other places. So we get a kind of lay of the land. I suppose the first thing that people always notice when they come to the Australian media industry is how relatively consolidated it is. So when it comes to news, you know, the news mastheads, whether it was newspapers or online publishing, dominated by News Corp. So, you know, the the obviously Australia is the, the original home of News Corp. We're uh, uh, just just a, a, a few weeks away from the 50th anniversary of Rupert Murdoch taking the helm. Um, so, so that is definitely underlying drumbeat. But then, you know, in the same way in, in, in television, there are really only two or three uh, major players when it comes to free to air television. So again, quite a small sort of consolidated thing. Um, and, the, and, and the same really goes by medium by medium, you know, as a, something somebody once said to me about Australia is, you know, in every industry in Australia, there's room for about two and a half players. And that really does seem to be true in the media as well. What does that mean for media when it's very consolidated and very centralized? The major issue, I think, when it comes to sort of the public interest, I suppose, is that you, you, you tend not to get the diversity of voices that you might get elsewhere. You know, there's a, uh, there, particularly when it comes to kind of, you know, the, the, the very mainstream media, you know, there, there are a narrow range of voices, which tends to mean that the politics can become quite homogenized as well, I suppose. And the recent kind of news or semi-recent news that uh, that they've changed the law that Facebook and Google will have to pay news publishers. It sounds really great. I know it was pushed by News Corp. It was basically them strongholding Facebook and Google. Is that as good as it sounds or is it... Uh, is there a lot of things you have to be wary about? Yeah, th th this was such a defining moment for Australia's media. And it said so much about Australians' media. The fact that um, the government of the time was willing to change the law to create this news media bargaining code, which effectively meant that um, Facebook and Google, if they were designated, would have had to pay publishers for the right to link to their content. Now, in the end, we ended up with this grubby compromise where uh, they were all leaned on or the, in the end, we had this grubby compromise where the two of them were were were, were leaned on to do deals with the publishers, uh, really on non-commercial terms, to give them a lot of money to avoid being designated. Um, now, what that meant was for the big end of town when it came to publishing, they did great because they got to do the deals. Um, what's tended to happen, though, is there's been this sort of long tail of much smaller publishers who haven't been able to do deals, particularly with Facebook. Go Google have done quite a lot. Facebook, not so many. So you 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 now have this even more un un uneven playing field where the big publishers have this extra revenue stream coming in where, you know, Facebook and Google are basically having to pay them a tax, uh, but that money isn't trickling through to the smaller media companies who also want to compete in that playing field. So it's it's kind of imperfect. Um, probably puts the publishers in a in a certainly the big publishers in a better position than otherwise they were. 
but yeah, wow, it said an awful lot about the, the, the point in Australia where politics meets the media business. Is there anything for people who are uh, media observers or executives to should know that they might be able to learn from the Australia media environment right now? One of the big themes I think that certainly we've seen in Australia, and I suspect this is a this is a bit of a bit of a global theme as well, because we're existing within this this ecosystem where there's a pendulum. And for the last ten years, we've seen this pendulum swing in the way that media is funded in Australia. So you know, for most of its history, media was funded in Australia through advertising. Um, you know, whether it's free to air television, whether it's newspapers, etc. And that began to change a decade ago as recruitment advertising disappeared from the newspapers and went online. Um, as streaming came through, for instance, you know, from about 2015 onwards. So you saw this sort of change to where actually consumers choosing to subscribe, you know, whether it was to to the streaming services, you Netflix or whatever, or whether it was, you know, to read newspapers online. And that actually became a more important revenue stream than advertising for the for the first time in media's history. And that was really stark in Australia. And it's also been interesting to see the pendulum just begin to to swing back a little as well. You know, as we we see, hey, look, you know, Netflix, Netflix subscriptions peak and uh uh, announced plans to begin having an advertising supported tier as well so we we are i think beginning to see this sort of new appreciation of the role of advertising in the ecosystem and i and i think that's a trend that's been quite well advanced in australia which i'm sure we will be seeing globally as well Please like and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm will show our videos to more people. Also join our Substack newsletter for exclusive updates or if you're on the go, find us wherever you listen to your audio podcasts. Click on one of the links to find our next video and also check out the links below for more information. Thanks so much for watching.